mighty God we serve. What a mighty, mighty God we serve. Would you bow with me to the source of our strength, to the strength of our life, to the very present help in the time of trouble. Heart fixer, mind regulator, strength like no other. We give your name glory today, O oh God, for your presence that is apparent in the tabernacle this morning. We give you praise, O oh God, for being with us in the midst of all that we're going through. We give you praise this morning, O oh God, for allowing your presence to meet us, for knowing what we needed before we were ever able to articulate it. We give you praise. Thank you, God, for your peace that passeth all understanding. Thank you, God, for the gentle reminder that you are still with us. Now, God, we ask that you would bless this transferring as we give you our burdens in return for your yoke of easiness. Transfer, God, our burden for your blessing, our hurt for your healing, our weakness for your strength our darkness for your light transfer unto us so that God we would give your name glory we would be your hands and your feet and your voice 
in the earth. Fill us that we would be poured out in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. You may be seated if you can. We give God glory for the gift of worship for his inhabitants amongst our praise on this morning. Thank God for Minister Ramona Rains and our worship team, our musicians, our virtual team that makes makes it happen every week. Hallelujah. It's, we are in the sermon series entitled It's Time to Move and this is uh, the last of this particular series as we prepare to transition uh, into our May series. Uh, so if you would meet me uh, Proverbs Proverbs 4 Proverbs 4 Meet me in Proverbs 4 verses 20 through 27. And if you would stand for the reading of God's word. My Bible reads like this. My son, pay attention to what I say. Turn your ear to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart. For they are life to those who find them and health to one's whole body. Verse 23 says, Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Keep your mouth free of perversity. Keep corrupt talk far from your lips. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Give careful thought to the paths of your feet and be steadfast in all your ways. Do not turn to the right or the left. Keep your foot from evil. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of God will last for eternity. Uh, you may be seated in the presence of God. Uh, from the sermon series, it's time to move. I would like to raise this thought from this text. Follow the plan. Follow the plan. Uh, within the confines of this proverb, we have Solomon, King Solomon, Solomon, Wisdom Solomon, Solomon giving instruction uh, to his son. Uh, if I could use a urban dialogue, uh, dialect minister Davis, Solomon is sitting down with his son and he's giving him the game. Uh, giving him the game is an urban dialect that uh, street brothers and sisters use when they are giving an understanding of how to win at whatever engagement they are having in life. So Solomon is literally giving his son the game. He's, he's telling his son how to be successful and who wouldn't take the time to sit down to listen to Solomon, one that was full of wisdom, one that had done so much for the Israel kingdom at this particular time. And Solomon starts off with him selling his son, son, pay attention to what I say. Turn your ear 
to my words. Don't let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart. He's having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with his son because he wants to give him some instructions on how to be able to move or maneuver if he is not present. Oh, some, some church folk don't know when to shout. Listen, he's giving him the instructions on how to move or maneuver in the absence of his presence. And that's one of the things that I've learned that if you're going to move, you have to have a, a plan. Now, God doesn't always divulge all of the workings and inner workings of the plan for your life, but he does give you instructions when he desires you to do something. Uh, oftentimes, we want to challenge the instructions because we don't fully understand or fully comprehend what God is doing. It makes it difficult to follow plans when we only know the outcome but don't know how, when, or why God may be doing something in the present moment. It's difficult to follow a plan when you don't have all of the instructions. Well, child of God, I want to let you know that God does not always divulge all of the inner workings of the plans. He, he doesn't always tell you the whys behind the whats or to give you the information that you may know or need. But what he does do, he gives you promises to an, of an expected end that you can have the assurity that he will perform. Uh, he doesn't tell you about all the knocks and bruises, the bumps and lumps uh, that you have to take on the way to get to the promised end, uh, but he does give you a promised end. Somebody ought to say, I'm focused on the promised end. Uh, like, like, so I understand that as I follow the plan, uh, that there are not always going to be high moments. They're not always going to be easy days, but I have uh, a promise. Somebody say, I got a promise. Uh, they're not always going to go the way that I want them to go. In fact, uh, I understand that following the plan uh, oftentimes takes me through some tight spaces and places uh, that may cause for me to want to abort the plan, but 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 because I know that I've got a promise, somebody ought to shout that right there, I've got a promise. Uh, because I have a promise, uh, I'm willing to follow the plan. Uh, now listen, Solomon gives his son uh, these specific instructions uh, that he needs to do starting at uh, verse 23 you see 21 20 21 and 22 is Solomon gauging the attention of his son uh, to let him know what I'm about to tell you what I'm fitting to drop on you uh, is something that's real important uh, so I need you to be paying full attention uh, so that when times get tight uh, you won't miss a step in the plan tell somebody you won't miss the step uh, listen and Solomon says, son, pay attention to what I say. Turn your ear to my words. Don't let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to one whole to one's whole body. Solomon says that what I'm getting ready to give you, everybody doesn't get. What I'm getting ready to download into your spirit is going to give you the privilege to be ahead of some folks if you simply take heed to it. Now here is the problem in the text Miss Vanessa that we all are privy to this insight that Solomon is giving his son but we all don't take heed to it. Uh, some believe that sugar ain't sweet uh, until they get it on the palate of their lips uh, and you're going to put yourself uh, and you can put yourself uh, further behind the eight ball uh, with failing to pay attention let me help uh, somebody in this place listen uh, I need you to understand that you are not exempt uh, that yes it can happen to you To I know you think you are so full uh, of what God has created in the earth and, and that you are above this and beyond that baby it can happen to you as well don't you think that you too good that you're above that you're beyond that this is for you too and if you take heed to
to the word that Solomon is giving his son, you will find yourself in a better space and a better place. But you got to be willing to follow the plan. Solomon tells his son, listen, I'm about to give you something in this plan that's going to help you even when I'm gone. Uh, he says, first of all, above all else, before you do anything else, guard your heart. Guard your heart. Because everything you do is going to flow from that. You have to be careful about who and what you allow in your heart. Because everything you do is going to flow from that seed that grows out of your heart. Okay, the Bible says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Right? At the end of the day, everything that comes out of your mouth literally began in your heart. <laughs> Solomon says, guard that. This very fertile ground called the heart with the wrong types of seeds being planted can grow an abundance of a harvest that ultimately can consume the very fiber of your being. Guard that. Uh, that I know you you want to love everybody uh, like Christ loved you. And, and I agree to that. But, but with that comes some guarding that, that everybody should not have access to those spaces and places of fertility in your heart. Because it can cause for a consumption of what God is trying to do. Guard that. Everything you do is going to flow from it. The next thing Solomon says is keep your mouth free of perversity. Keep corrupt talk far from your lips. So not only do I have to guard my heart, but remember my words are connected to my heart. So if, my, if by chance my heart becomes corrupt, now what I say out of my mouth will be perverse and corrupt. Now let me tell you, perverse and corrupt in the text doesn't necessarily mean, mean nasty, but it does mean negative. God help me Holy Ghost uh, that if you allow something negative in your heart uh, then something negative gonna come out your mouth uh, if you allow something corrupt in your heart uh, then corruption is gonna come out of your mouth uh, and so I gotta I have to change what goes into my heart uh, to change what comes out of my mouth uh, because whatever comes up out of my mouth uh, now creates okay listen <laughs> listen I need to let you know that you have the Ruah, breath of life, breath of God. Ruah is a feminine context of spirit of God. See, some folks get upset when I say the Holy Spirit is a she. But how else can you create man? Male cannot birth. Help me in this place. So there is even in the in the word Yahweh, or as they pronounce Yahweh or Spirit of God, it is a feminine and a masculine context in the Hebrew. And so Ruah, Spirit of God, the 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 the, the breath of God that's breathed into Adam to make Adam come alive is a feminine context. And that same feminine context, when you say something out of your mouth, now creates it. it it causes creation and so when you speak negative out of your mouth you create negative in your atmosphere uh, you tell somebody only positive vibes uh, over here I, 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 can't, I can't deal with the negativity that may be spewed out of your mouth. Only positive vibes over here. Just because you got a harvest of negativity in your heart is now spewing out of your mouth and creating a negative forest of life and atmosphere around you which creates more negative seed that goes back into your heart, that comes back out of your mouth, that causes more negative atmosphere to grow around you, that creates more negative seed that goes back into your heart that comes back out your mouth that creates a negative atmosphere around you and you perpetuate the cycle of negativity because you could not guard your heart and now the heart has created these seeds of the word that come out of your mouth and so not only do you gotta guard your heart but you gotta learn how if you don't have nothing nice to say mama say keep your mouth closed 
I don't keep my mouth closed simply because I don't want to hurt your feelings. I keep my mouth closed to keep from creating a negative atmosphere so I can get out of this perpetuated cycle of negativity in my life. And so I have to be willing to follow the plan. Preach, Patrick Kaysen. Not only I got to guard my heart, tell your neighbor, guard your heart. Here's the plan. All right, here's the plan. Tell somebody I'm going to give you the game. Y'all ain't talking to me. Tell somebody I'm going to give you the game. Type text, put it in the, put it in the, in the stream, I'm going to give you the game. Here's the game right here. Here's, here's how you come up on your move. Guard your heart. The church say guard your heart. The second thing you got to do is you got to watch your mouth. Guard your heart. Watch your mouth. The next thing that Solomon says is you got to fix your focus. You got to fix your focus. I'm going to follow the plan number one. And I'm going to get in it. Pastor Case is giving you the game today. I'm going to guard my heart. I'm going to watch my mouth. And I got to fix my focus. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. It's time to move, but, but I can't move the way I need to move if I'm looking all around me. You got to fix your focus. I tell the story. Uh, in a sermon, Miss Vanessa, how I went to the optometrist, and and while I was at the optometrist, you notice when they when you go to the optometrist, they put this thing on your face as they're trying to figure out your lens uh, and your view, and you can't see nothing else around you. In fact, they put it so close to your face that you can't see. Your peripheral vision is now gone. The only thing you can see is what's right in front of you. If you're gonna win in this season. You got to fix your focus. Kiki, have you ever wondered why uh, in a horse races, you know, they get ready to come up on all the little horse races. The horse, the horses have blinders. They start off in, in, in stalls where they can't see, really see or focus on the horse next to them. Uh, it's so that their focus can be fixed on what's directly in front of them. Because horses... <laughs> are easily distracted animals. And the enemy will keep you from moving as long as he can fix your focus on the problem versus the solution. Golly, listen. Let your eyes look straight ahead. That now I'm more consumed on where I'm going than being focused on what I'm going through. You can't see your way out as long as you're looking around. You got to look straight ahead. The, the finish line ain't to the left. The finish line ain't to the right. I, I, I wasn't a big track star. My nephew's here, but, but he'll tell you that the finish line is always uh, straight ahead. Uh, I can't look at who's to my left uh, or who's to my right uh, or what's to my left or what's to my right. Uh, I've got to be focused on uh, the finish line for the race is not getting to the swift nor the battle to the strong but guess what time and chance happen to us all but if I'm focused on the finish line I can't worry about left or right or problem or situation or what I can fix or what I can't fix I have to focus on the finish line tell somebody I gotta stay focused I, I gotta stay focused I gotta stay focused in this world of media distractions I gotta stay focused in this world where it's so easily to pull your attention I gotta stay focused in the world in this world where, where there is a spiritual and natural ADHD going on I gotta stay focused where everybody's online everybody's on television everybody's preaching everybody
everybody's doing a devotional, I got to stay focused on what God called me to do. Because if I, the only way I'm going to finish talk is if I stay focused on what he called me to do. That means I ain't got time to be minding your business or your business or their business. The only thing I got time to do is stay focused. I ain't got time to deal with your negativity or your negativity because if I let your negativity come into my focus, it's going to convolute what God is trying to do in my life. So excuse me, I just got to stay focused. You got to listen, listen, listen. You got to fix. You got to fix your focus. I'm giving you the game. Guard your heart. Right? Watch your mouth. Fix your focus. And the last thing he says is, he says, give careful thought to the paths for your feet. Uh, tell somebody you got options. <sighs> God, I wish, I wish, listen, this is, this is, he says, give careful thought to the paths for your feet. And what you need to understand, what, what, what I want to give you, the game I'm going to give you right now is something, Gerald, that everybody doesn't talk about. You've got options. Uh, excuse my urban dialect real quick. Can't nobody make you do nothing. You've got options. Solomon wants his son to know, son, you get to choose. You take. Don't be mad. God help me when you end up where you end up because of the decisions that you made. Real quick, somebody type this. Tell somebody. Tell somebody. I got more power than I think. I, I got. I got. And, and I got more power than I think I do. See, listen. Watch this. I'm gonna show you how powerful your choice is. God. The creator of everything, the divine orchestrator, Bert, does not force you to choose him. If God won't make you choose him, if you got options in choosing God, why do you think you don't have options in every other aspect of your life? Bible says, let me give you a Bible, out of my urban dialect, choose ye this day whom you will serve. That there is a level of authority in your choice that is tied to your destiny overall. And so Solomon says, son, whatever you do, don't forget you got some choices. I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with, with harmony on positive and negative consequences. Uh, when she does some things that she's not supposed to do, I'll pull her to the side and I'll say, was that positive or was that negative? And based upon what she does, she'll say, well, daddy, that was negative. I said, so now here's a consequence of what it is that because you chose this, and you chose to do this. Now here's the consequence that's either positive or negative that you now have to endure. And sometimes, because my daughter's slick like her daddy, sometimes she'll do things and laugh and think that I'm going to laugh with her until she has to deal with the consequence. And one of my favorite caseisms that I like to share with my daughter when she laughs, when she does something negative is this. I say, the same thing that make you laugh will show enough to make you cry. And so now when it was fun to do what you did, you didn't have an issue with it then, but now you have to deal with 
the consequences of your decisions. But here's the trick. You didn't have to choose that. No, you didn't have to end up down that road. No, you didn't have to go that direction. And guess what, y'all? I'm not going to allow anybody to make me feel bad because I chose what I chose. I'm not going to allow you to frustrate me because you're frustrated in what you're going through because you chose what you chose. The reality is, is that I have more authority in my life than I think that I do and I have power in my choices. Tell somebody what you gonna choose. What you gonna choose today? Will you choose to serve the Lord or will you choose to serve yourself? What do you choose today? Do you choose to be obedient or do you choose to do your own thing? What do you choose today? Because at the end of the day you're the one that has to pay the price. Not only does he tell them to be careful in which way what he chooses but then he says once you choose it be man enough to stand in it he says be steadfast in all of your ways whatever you decide be man or woman enough woman enough have the unmitigated goal have the intestinal fortitude to be able to stand in it once you made a decision on it don't you be swayed but watch this it says do not turn to the right or the left keep your foot from evil that anytime I stray off of this path of God I'll end up in trouble he tells him about his decisions he tells him to be steadfast in it but then he reminds him whatever you choose that at the end of the day that you need to ensure that you're lining up with God and I want to encourage somebody as they're planning on making their next move their best move I want to encourage somebody this morning to let you know as I give you the game number one guard your heart number two watch your mouth number three fix your focus number four understand you've got a choice in this matter and last but not least I want to help you today by letting you know that when you line up with God that can't no evil take you out he'll put a hedge a protection all around you and even though it feels like you're traveling through the valley of the shadow of death the God that I serve when he lines you up won't let hurt harm or danger come towards you have I got a witness in here that when I decided to move for God he ordered my steps and he met me with mercy. That's why the Bible says no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. I want to let somebody know that when you decide to move you going to make the devil mad as hell. When you decide to move, your friends will be frustrated with you. When you decide to move your family going to start fussing. When you, when you when you, when you you decide to move that things are going to try to stop you and keep you from reaching the potential and the plan of God but you ought to tell somebody ain't nothing going to stop me from reaching what God has for me and if you know that God will do it for you you ought to stand up right where you are in your living room right where you are around the kitchen table and say this step is me stepping out of what I've been in and this step is me stepping into the plan of God is there anybody here that knows that God still has a plan for you I can hear Job as he was wrestling with all that was going on children died wealth taken sores over his body I can hear Job say though he slay me yet will I trust him I'm not telling you you're not going to go through when you move but the hardest part of moving is 
trusting God that he will be there when you get to the next place is there anybody in the building today that say I trust that when I move God will be there and I see him do too much to doubt him now I've seen him do too much to quit now I've seen him do too much to throw in the towel so I'm gonna move I'm not sure what it's gonna look like but I'm gonna move I'm not sure how I may end up but I'm gonna move because the God that I serve is still able to do exceeding abundantly above all you can ask or think why don't you grab yourself and squeeze yourself and say self it's time to move it's gonna be hard but I choose to move it might be sad but I choose to move I might feel lonely but I choose to move and when I move I believe that the steps that I take are gonna land me on the straight the street go straight the steps that I take are gonna land me in the promised place the steps that I take are gonna put me in the plan of God so I'm willing to leave behind what I mean to walk in to my destiny you want to tell somebody I got destiny and it doesn't end here I know I look down but it ain't over I know I feel out but it ain't over that cow got one more move to make and when he moves I promise you that I'm gonna shout matter of fact ain't gonna wait till he moves but my faith says he's moving already and so now I'll praise him in advance I'll praise him in the face of sickness I'll praise him in the face of financial hardship I'll praise him in the midst of going through with my hands lifted up and my mouth filled with praise I will I will I will bless the Lord at all times shout yeah shout yeah and if you know God's gonna do it help me preach lift your hands throw your head back open your mouth tell the Lord thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you Sometimes struggle is a part of the plan. Tears are a part of the plan. Frustration is a part of the plan. Headache and heartache are part of the plan. And since we don't know what the plan or how the plan is going, 
come to pass. That's why I had to give you the game. Guard your heart. <laughs> this, this is how you get through those dark moments. These, these, this, this information I gave you is not about the hallelujah high times. It's about the valley low depressing times. Guard your heart. Watch your mouth. Fix your focus. You got to follow the plan. You got options. Nobody's making you do anything. You quit. Any, you can you can quit anytime you want to. Ain't nobody making you stay here. You got options. Watch your step and stay on the straight. Stay on the straight. Look what it says. Do not turn to the right or the left. Keep your foot from evil. When I deviate from the plan, I now have put myself in a space of evil. I got to stay straight. No matter what comes my way, I got to stay straight. And I believe that, that sooner or later, he going to fix it for me. And I'm going to stay straight till he do. Now listen, I'm giving you the game because I know it ain't always easy. Sometimes you want to say to hell with it. I'm going to do my own thing. You just turn to the right. Forget them explicit. I'll just call them explicit. You done turn to the left. It was easier for me back then than it is right now. Yeah. It is, it was, you're right. You ain't had no struggles, you ain't had no strife, you ain't had no headaches, you ain't had no problems, but you had eternal damnation. Tell me what you didn't have, I can tell you what you did have. A one-way ticket to hell. Straight, no chaser. Now that you're on this straight road, it, it's not always easy. It's not always easy watching your words. It ain't always easy guarding your heart too because you think church folk are supposed to be like Jesus. And you find out that everybody in church ain't like Jesus. So now they hurt your heart. You thought because you got saved, mama and grandmama won't go pass up. Listen. And now you, you bitter with God because it didn't go your way. It was all a part of the plan. So let me give you the game, how to stay with the plan. Stay straight. Fix your focus. You got options. It's not either or. It can be both and. Y'all ain't gonna help me in here. Fix your focus. Watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. Before, before Adam was saved, because Adam wasn't saved. Salvation didn't come till Jesus. Adam wasn't saved. But Adam had the spirit of God. I know I'm, I'm messing, I'm being messy. Let me stop. Adam wasn't, Adam wasn't a Christian, but God breathed his breath in him. And anything that you give birth to has some of your characteristics. When you see Harmony, you see a female version of me. She got my characteristics. What you shaking your head for? Carlton Ashford Jr. Is that Jakari? Is your son? Boy, 
it has, it has, it has some of your attributes. And so when God breathed into Adam, he gave him his spirit. Right? So now, watch this. Now Adam has the spirit to create. Hence why Adam's first job is what? Naming the animals. And we call them the same names today. He created. Watch your mouth. Before you say it out your mouth, swallow it three times. Think it in your head, swallow it back down. Think it in your head, swallow it back down. The fourth time they come up, we, we pray in the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. By the time we get to the fourth one, we're hoping that you got a new thought. And if you still decide to say it, just be ready to deal with the consequences. Be steadfast in that. Follow the plan, y'all. I promise you. I promise you we'll make it. It's time to move. Standing all over the building. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this word. We pray, God, that it penetrated the hearts of your people. God, we pray now for someone that is not saved. Lord, we ask that you would come into our hearts. Make us new. We recognize that we are sinners. We acknowledge your son Jesus hung, bled, and died, and rose on the third day. We recognize him as Savior and Lord. Forgive us. God, we pray for those right now that are in a backslidden state, creating me a clean heart, renewing me a right spirit, blot out all of my transgressions, and forgive me. Forgive me of my sins. Pray right now, God, for somebody that's struggling, with the vicissitudes of life. Pray now, God, that you would ease their life. Help them to see the end. Give them the fortitude to continue to run on. For you said that your strength is made perfect in our weakest moments. So we don't lean on us, we lean on you to get us out of what we're in. And we know that you can and you will do it. Sooner or later, it'll turn for us. We stand in agreement with your word. That all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord. And we love you. Now may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make the Lord's face and countenance to shine upon you. May the Lord give you peace. Peace that you no longer worry or be weary. Peace that you may rest through the night. May the blessed God of peace, Jehovah Shalom, grant you God's peace. Jesus name. Amen. Hey, I love you. There's absolutely nothing you can do about it. Don't let anything or anybody steal your joy. Don't let anything or anybody disturb your peace. Have a great day on purpose and we'll see you in the morning. God bless you. you and thank you for taking the time to tune in to the Bethany Experience virtual worship. Uh, we pray that something was said or done in this moment to help you along life's journey. Now, if you desire to support the Bethany Baptist Church, there are three ways in which you can do it. First, you can give via Givelify. All you have to do is download the Givelify app and look for Bethany Baptist Church. Secondly, you can log on to our website, www.experiencebethany.com. And lastly, you can stop by the church, 2587 Campostella Road in the beautiful city of Chesapeake. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you and we'll see you in the morning.